G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a cloud pour with some satin enamels. Uh, I have been using the Folk Art Milk Paint, which I really like. And I've done a few pours in that and then I thought I'll just go back to the satin enamels and just see what the difference is. And then I can maybe decide which one I prefer. Uh, so my white, I'm using the Artist Loft Flow, um, but you can use Liquitex Basics if you don't have this. Um, you just have to mix it three to one um, instead of one to one. So I've got one to one white paint with Flow Troll. The white paint is made up of three parts this to one part that. So I've got 30 grams of this, 10 grams of that, which is 40 grams and then I've got 40 grams of Floetrol. So does that make sense? And then all my Liquitex Basics, I've got three parts Floetrol to one part Liquitex Basics because they're a much thicker paint. My dark blue here, I've got uh, phthalo blue with just a tiny dash of black to darken it to make it a navy. This gorgeous, gorgeous colour, look at that. I used equal parts of primary blue and phthalo green and then just two drops of the white. The purple is dioxazine purple and this magenta here is called Acra magenta. Don't know, maybe it's a new one. I don't know, it's just a pinky colour. So I don't know if it's the same as um, the other magenta that Liquitex Basics make, I'm not sure. I'm going to go with a little bit less paint this time. I think the last few paintings I've done, I've had too much paint. I used one of those big stripy cups. I'm just going to go back to the little cup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour all my, well, actually, I'm going to layer my paints in just once. And I'm going to pour the white in from up high. Actually, I'm, what I'm going, to, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of white in the bottom first, just like that, tiny bit. Just enough to basically cover the bottom. So pour the blue in first. And hopefully, I'm ho well, I'm hoping I haven't made too much paint. I made as little as I possibly could. It was 45 grams of Floetrol and 15 grams of paint. Being three to one. So I'm hoping it's all going to fit in here. I know I could have used a bigger cup, but... For me, if I've got a bigger cup, I tend to want to fill it up. So I've just made smaller amounts of paint. I don't know. I just, I just don't think cloud pours are my thing. <laughs> Who knows? We can't do everything, can we? So I've got the dark blue and the turquoise blue. Now I've got the dark purple. And then I'll put that sort of lighter purpley pink in. And then I'm going to pour in half of the white from up high. And then I'm, the rest of the white I'm going to put just around the, um, the ring pour. Well, look at that. I'm managing. Looks as if that's all going to fit. Woohoo. Well, that's, that's intelligent of me, isn't it? Just made enough. So I made... Uh, 320 grams of mixed paint all up that includes the white I knew I wouldn't fit all the white in this little cup though but I'm only using half of it so it'll be fine and this is a 30 by 40 centimeter or 12 by 16 inch so let's go from up high so it's full a little bit I've got left just going to Pour it around like that, scrape it out, don't want to lose any of this, it's like liquid gold, this satin enamel, it's hard to get. I bought my little jars oh, a few months ago, or well, maybe a couple of months ago, when it was still easily accessible, not so easy to get now. Actually, I wouldn't mind getting some of the beige. I think that would be really pretty. Beiges with like musky pinks, that sort of thing. I think that would be pretty. Okay, let's do a ring pour. 
Hopefully I've got enough white in there. And I do have that tiny little bit of white in the bottom. So um, that should give me a little bit of a, a white center. And here we go, circles. Concentrating, concentrating on doing my circles with the rest of my colors. Here comes the turquoise. Looks like I'm going to have to get a little bit closer to the surface if I want round circles. Because when you're a little bit up high, they tend to get a little bit wobbly. Okay. So there's no reason why you can't, you know, as, as you saw me do there, move that white around. You don't want it all concentrated in the centre. But I have got the white underneath here. And I think as the paint rolls over this ring of white, hopefully the white cells will pop up as well. Let's give that a bit of a torch. to try again with my uh, milk paint but I've run out so I'm waiting for the delivery okay let's see how this is going to behave go around in a circle first the paints pretty thick um, it does leave a mound so it's rolling over a lot of that pink that I've had there and with this technique you really want to you know stretch your paint so don't have too much paint on the surface and stretch it out you know go to each corner don't go quite over go to each corner once come back to the middle and then go to that corner again I just think it helps with the paint uh, sort of rubbing over the other paint that encourages cells to pop up. That's my theory anyway. I don't know that I like all that white that I've put in the middle now. <laughs> Can't win. As I said, ring, uh, cloud paws, they're just not really my thing okay so that's gone to each corner I think I tend to always put too much white in the bottom see that was that tiny tiny little bit of white that I put in the bottom of the cup it was hardly anything and now it just looks ew see I shouldn't do that I should just next time not put the white in the bottom I just think it's too much so this is pretty here that's just yeah it's too blobby now so I think yeah not having the paint in the bottom the white paint in the bottom would have been a better choice and I would have had more like this everywhere instead of all that white which is now taken over Because you stretch it out so much that tiny little bit of white you know it's it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger back to the middle so I basically lost all my pretty rings around the outside I've just got that one big blob in the middle Stretch, 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 stretch. Just made it. See, I don't find the satin enamel as reactive as the milk paint. All right. But we'll see what happens. It, it may still come up. 
we'll give it a torch and then wait a bit, see what happens. Looks like the outside of a shell, doesn't it? All curled around like that. And maybe a ring pour wasn't the best idea. Maybe a dirty pour would have been better. Um, all right, I'm going to pour over that. I'm going to just pause this video and I'm going to make up some more paint. Just one sec. Okay, I've made up some more paint. It's becoming a habit lately. Making up more paint now. I've gone back to my bigger cup. <laughs> I've made my paints a little bit thinner. I just added a splash of water. Um, I made up a little bit of extra paint. I did 60 grams of flow troll for the paints and 20 grams of paint, so 60 20. So that's still three to one and a splash of water. Uh, this, the white, I made up, I wrote it down, 90 grams of flow troll to 60 grams of my white. So that's one and a half times. So just making them a touch thinner. Okay, let's go again. I'm going to just do a dirty pour this time, not a layered cup, same as I do when I do my pearl pours. And we'll see how that goes. So in with the blue, in with the green, in with the purple, and in with the pink. And then I'm going to add half of the white. Yeah, see, I don't need the other half now because I've already got the canvas covered, so I might not need all of that. i put a little bit more in. Hopefully that's not too much. Oh, dear. Okay, if I didn't have a canvas covered already, I would then put the rest of the white around like I did in the first one. Okay, now, um, I might just do a dirty pour. See how it goes. These have all been ring pours that I've done so far, so let's just try, eh? Experiment. See how it goes. Now, once I start seeing a lot of white come out, I'll just stop. Okay, oops, that's <laughs> running off. <gasps> All right, so that was too much paint, you guys. But I wanted to see what would happen with them. A dirty pour and a little bit thinner. So let's torch. my pearl pores they're my favorites with the metallic the uh, supreme sheen my favorite out of these style of pores okay um, because I don't have rings this time I don't need to worry about keeping my ring shape so I'm just gonna go to this corner first plenty of paint so I can Take that off. I don't want to lose all my blue though. Back to the middle. Actually, I might go this opposite corner. The paint wants to go that way. It's running that way. Over we go. And back. So this is your traditional galaxy pour, really. These colours and this style. If you want to do galaxy pours, this is... I think the way to do it. Now I'll just turn that around and then I can tilt towards you again. So not really a traditional cloud pour, this one. Um, as I said, more of a galaxy pour. I think I've done these before, haven't I? The galaxy. 
Okay, let's just leave that there for a minute. And I'm going to torch it. You can see all the little white specks popping up as I'm popping bubbles. basically got purples on this side and then that sort of greenish turquoise on that side. Now I'm just going to move the paint around a little bit just to sort of encourage some cells to pop up. I don't want to move it too much because the cells that you've got will start sort of overstretching and getting out of shape. But I just want to move them a little bit. So I think I'll have to put the video on pause for a bit and just wait and see what happens. The satin enamels, I think, seem to be, they take a little bit longer to react than the, the milk paint. So that can just sit there for a minute and I'm going to cover my corners. I can find some blue. It looks very purple. Where's the blue? I can't find any blue. Oh, there's some. Is it doing much? It's not doing much, is it? I probably need to stretch it a bit more. That's the problem with having too much paint on the surface. You cover everything, but you've still left too much paint on the surface. It's too thick. I'm going to have to... Um, let's just go off this way a little bit more. There's a lot of paint down there. I've left way too much on the surface. So it's not going to react the way I want it to. Okay, I'll leave it there. I'm going to go for that sort of longish look like that across the canvas. Which I think is more galaxy looking. And you do it like that, sort of across on an angle like that, rather than just leaving a little section in the middle. Way, way too much paint I used. Should have just stuck with my little cup. Lesson learned. I'm just going to take this back to the middle so I can get that oblong shape again. Almost there. Okay, I think that's about it. It's about the shape I'm looking for. So yeah, as I said, more of a galaxy pour than a cloud pour, this particular style where you do a dirty pour and not a ring pour. Well, that's what I find anyway. I, I find I get more of a, a galaxy that way, especially if you use these dark colours. Definitely more galactic looking. Um, yeah, I think my little cup is probably better than my big cup. Don't need that much paint for this little size. It's too much. It's just wasted. I've tipped half of it out off the, on the table. Okay, uh, now I will, I'm just going to pause the video. 
I like what's happening. Little blobby cells coming up. Um, it's actually pretty similar to. I didn't actually. I didn't realise I'd actually done one of these recently. That's dry. Oh, yeah, it's pretty much dry now. Another galaxy one that I did. A lot darker this one. This one's got more in the way of cells popping up. And then this one again, similar colours, but that was the ring pour. So I poured it in a ring, so you can see those definite rings or. I call them intestines. I don't think that's as attractive. I prefer that look personally. So yeah, just been playing around with the different techniques. Um, and then, of course, this was the, that was the milk paint. Um, it gives a lovely, soft, cloudy effect. That was the ring pour. So I still like that one. I do like the milk paint. I think I actually prefer it to, to this satin enamels. I don't know that I'm going to get a lot happening more than this. Mix might have been a little bit too thick still. But it's pretty. I mean, if you're going for a Galaxy Pour, 10 out of 10. You've got a Galaxy Pour. But um, not so much for the cloudy effect. Right, so I might take you in for a close-up so that you can see what's been happening. And I don't think we're going to get a lot more action. Turn off that light. lights above me <laughs> not really working okay so there it is so we've got sort of the left hand side there is more purpley looking and then it moves through to that darker blue section in the middle there and then the lighter sort of turquoise on the right We've got lots of little meteors happening. And if you're going to do a galaxy, try and do that sort of oblong centre. And I think it just looks nicer corner to corner rather than, you know, straight on. I just think it looks more like a, a galaxy. So there you go. And uh, I tilted, I probably tilted too much. So I've got a lot of those cells have turned into more of a, a cloudy effect up there um, because I've, I've tilted because I had, I had too much paint on the surface. So you only need a, a small cup when you're doing this size canvas. You don't need too much paint. Um, yeah, because you have to basically have a thin layer of paint on the surface so that the, the white satin enamel can pop through. So if your paint's too thick, it can't pop through. So don't have so much paint. Righto, there we go. Um, I think I'm done with the Galaxy Paws. I've done quite a lot now, haven't I? Yep. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.